surprising for you. Okay, thank you. Please be seated. <clears throat> All right, we're back on the record on KCR 22 211623, State of Idaho versus Chad Guy Daybell. I'll note that the witness, Ms. Gibb, is still under oath. The state's continuing with direct examination. We just concluded our mid morning. Recess, it went slightly longer than anticipated. I had a matter I took up with counsel on a sidebar that was reported in the case. I believe we're ready to commence then with further examination. And Ms. Blake, just for scheduling purposes, we do want to take a lunch break today, uh, approximately noon, if that works out with your scheduling. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll watch the clock. Thank you. Go ahead. Ms. Gibb, before we took the break, we were we'd been talking about the killing of Charles and your observation shortly after that. Prior to Charles' death, did you and Lori have conversations about her relationship with Chad? Yes. Yes. Do you recall if she shared with you the nature of their relationship? Um, yes. And what did she share with you, if you recall? Um, that they, they really loved each other. Um, they had been in multiple lives. They had missions together. Um, that there was some physical affection, contact. And this was when Charles was still living as well? Yes. And we talked about when Chad came back down, or when Chad came down to Arizona after Charles had been killed, Lori and Chad talking about plans for a future together. Right. Did that include talk of the missions that you just referenced? Yes. Your Honor, I believe we already went over that before the break. If you'd like me to go over it again. Well, if that's an objection, then it's overruled. And she shared with you that there was some physical, some kind of physicalness within their relationship. Correct. Did she tell you whether or not she thought that was okay because they were both married? Yes. She said that every time she would um, get together with Chad, she would always ask Jesus if what was acceptable or appropriate that she could interact with Chad. And if she felt she had the affirmation that it was okay, then she would do it? I assume. Did she tell you where they would meet up? Um, hotels. Did you ever talk to Chad or Lori about uh, whether either of them were seeking a divorce? Yes. What did you learn in relation to that? I asked why weren't they getting a divorce, and she told me that if Chad were to seek after a divorce, that um, he would be in trouble with Jesus, that he would lose his exaltations. Did she tell you where she got that information? She got it from Chad. Do you know if Charles had started any divorce proceedings? Oh, yes, I believe so. But Lori didn't. Correct. Did you ever see Lori with more than one phone? Yes. Do you recall approximately how many phones you saw her with? Three. Did she ever tell you anything about why she had three phones? Um, one was uh, her own personal phone, and then one was she just had a connection with Chad through the other phone, and I'm not sure about the other one. So one of the phones was to communicate with Chad? Yes. Did you ever learn if Chad had more than one phone? I think he, I remember she saying he had a special phone just for her, but that's all I remember. Did 
Lori ever share with you how often she and Chad were in contact? It was mostly daily. I'm sure there was times where she said, you know, she couldn't contact him for certain reasons, but mostly it was daily. And would that have been since approximately since they met that they stayed in that type of contact, if you yeah. know? Yes, that I know of. And we talked about Lori telling you, Chad had shared with her that they'd been married in prior lives. That's right. Did she ever tell you specific names that they had in prior lives or who they were? Yes. What were some of those that she shared with you? Um, I'm trying to remember her names. Um, I'm not remembering her names. I remember certain positions, though. And what were those positions? Um, she was married to Moroni, and she was married to um, James, and she was uh, she, she um she was Chad's wife. But he was James, and she was, I think, Elena. And then she was, he was, Chad was considered to be Methuselah, and she was his daughter, I believe, but I don't remember a name. Seemed like there was another, yeah, another time she was um, a lady that was married to a relative of Joseph Smith. I can't recall her name right now. I can't, and there could have been another one. I'm just not recalling it. And when you say you remember positions, were those biblical or or um, figures within some scriptures? Yes. When she was Elena, do you know who Chad was supposed to have been in that life? James, one of the apostles of Jesus Christ. And is that one of the times that they were married in a previous life? Yes. Did she tell you where she learned that information? From Chad. Did she ever tell you how Chad would get his information? She said that he would uh, sit in his portal and ask questions. Did you ever see the portal that that was referenced? Yes. Oh, well, not his, but hers. Yeah. And what did you observe in relation to Lori's portal? It was nothing but, you know, just a, a spot in her closet. I mean, it didn't look like anything. Just She just considered it her portal, but it looked like just a regular space. And who told her that was a portal? Um, Chad told her and taught her about it. Had Lori ever talked to you about portals before meeting Chad? I can't recall. Do you recall when the last time you saw Tylee was? In Arizona, July, July or August of uh, 2019. And after Charles' death, at some point, do you recall Lori leaving Arizona? Yes. Do you know where she relocated? She relocated to Rexburg. Did she ever talk to you about why she left to Arizona to go to Rexburg? Yes. She wanted to be with Chad and start their missions together. Do you know whose idea it was for her to go to Idaho? Did she share that with you? I can't remember if it was hers or both of theirs. But she wanted to go to be with Chad. Correct. And when she left to go to Idaho, to the best of your knowledge, was Tammy still alive? She was. We had talked about people being light and dark. 
Do you recall if Lori ever said anything to you in relation to Tylee and whether or not what her level was or her rating? Um, she did say she was dark at some point. Um, I don't remember the rating. Do you know who gave her that information? I'm guessing it was Chad. I don't remember. Generally speaking, would she tell you she turned to Chad for these answers? Yeah. Did you know of anything else Chad used to get answers? Um, yes. One time I saw him with a pendulum. Do you recall what the pendulum looked like? It was gold, uh, I think, or brass, and it was had a, like a pointiness to the bottom of it and like a string. Do you recall when you saw that? That was in February of 2019. Do you recall where you were? Uh, yeah, I was here in Boise, Idaho. And do you recall why you were in Boise? Yeah, there was a conference that weekend that I came to. Do you recall who was present with you that you associated with at that conference? Yes, um, Chad was there and Sulema, Serena, and Audrey. And there were a lot of other people, but that was in the little small circle of friends. Were those the individuals around when um, you saw the pendulum? Right, correct. I didn't hear you mention Lori. Was she there? No. Do you know where she was? She was in Hawaii, I believe. When Lori moved to Idaho, do you recall who went with her? Um, JJ and Tylee and Alex. He was either there before or after. He, I don't know. I know at some point he was up there. So Alex, her brother, moved around the same time she did? Yeah. Yes. And this is after Charles has been killed, correct? Correct. And it's after Chad has told Alex that he's Lori's protector. Is that correct? I believe so. Do you recall if you ever spoke to Lori after she'd moved to Idaho? Yes. Do you recall if you heard anyone in the background when you talked to her? Yes, she was um, in her apartment playing games with Alex and Tylee. So you heard Tylee in the background uh, I, when you talked to her? Yes. Do you recall approximately when that would have been? Um, August or September, I'm not sure. Would it have been shortly after they'd moved to Rexburg? Yes, they just moved in. At some point after Lori and Alex and the children moved to, moved to Idaho, did you end up visiting Lori? I did. Do you recall approximately when that was? Um, the weekend of September 22nd. And was that of 2019? Correct. Do you recall why you ended up coming to Idaho during that weekend? Yes. Um, there was a conference in town, and then I was going to record a podcast with her. Had you and Lori recorded podcasts before? Yes. When you came to Idaho, where did you end up staying? At Lori's house. And did you drive or fly, do you recall? I flew. Who picked you up at the airport? At Lori. When you got to Lori's house during that weekend, who was present? Um, uh, Alex was there and JJ was there. And then occasionally Chad would come over. And then was there an individual named David Warwick that also ended up there? Oh, yes. And who was David Warwick? He's my husband now. And at the time? He was my boyfriend. Do you know if Alex had his own apartment as well? Yes. And he did? He did. But he would be at Lori's at times? Yes. I didn't hear you say anything about Tylee. Did you ever see Tylee when you arrived in Idaho? No. Did you ask Lori at any point where Tylee was? Yes. What were you told? I was told that she was um, at the BYU 
Idaho campus at school and she got roommates with some girls that she was able to get her in. Did Lori talk any more about Tylee while you were there? No. Did you ever see Tylee come visit? No. Ever hear Lori on the phone with her? No. Do you know whose room you stayed in while you were there? Tylee's. Were a lot of Tylee's items in the room? Nothing was in there. That was clothing or anything, just furniture. Did Lori talk to you about JJ while you were there? Yes. What did she tell you? She told me that um, the day before I arrived that he became dark. So previously she told you Tylee was dark. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And now JJ was dark. Correct. Did you observe JJ that weekend? Yes. Did you observe any behaviors that caused you concern? No. Do you recall her telling you why she believed he was dark? Either Chad told her or she figured it out herself. I, I'm thinking it was Chad, but I'm not I'm not remembering. And Chad was present at times that weekend, yes. correct? Yes. Was he present when there was talk of JJ being dark? I, it's possible. Did you ever observe any interactions between JJ and Chad while you were there? Yes. And what were those? Um, um, JJ seemed to be upset, and so Chad uh, took him upstairs with him, and they went into um, All right, I'll construe that as an objection based on foundation, Ms. Blake. Ms. Gibb, do you recall approximately when in your visit the interaction occurred? I feel like it was um, Thursday, like I got there on a Wednesday, I believe. I, th I feel like it was the next day. And I guess for reference, how long were you there at Lori's? Uh, from Wednesday to Monday morning. So best of your recollection, this is around your second or your first full day there. I think so. And if you could go ahead and um, tell us again what you observed. Okay. Um, he took him upstairs and then after a period of time, he came back downstairs. Um, I believe he was holding his hand and that's what I observed with them. Did you observe any injuries to Chad? He had a red scratch on his neck. Did he tell you how he got that? I asked him, and he said that J.J. had scratched him. Had you seen many interactions between Chad and J.J. before that? No. When you were there, you talked about Chad coming and going. Did he stay the night, to the best of your knowledge? No, I never noticed that. And this um, weekend that you're there, Tammy was still alive. Is that correct? Yes. Did you ever hear Chad talk about Tammy? Um, a little bit. Do you recall what you heard? Um, Chad and David Warwick were speaking at the island, and David was asking him questions about Tammy, and and Chad said, and please don't share this with anybody, my relationship with um, Lori. And so we asked, David asked questions about the relationship he had with Tammy. Uh, Ms. Blake, objection based on foundation. Your Honor, I think she's recalling events from that weekend. So we do have a narrowed time frame. I can ask a follow-up question, but I don't, it's based on her personal knowledge. I'll sustain the objection if you want to ask additional foundational questions, Ms. Blake. Do you recall approximately when you heard this conversation between David and Chad during your stay? 
it would have been on the weekend uh, because David was there already. He didn't come until Friday, so it could have been like on a Saturday or Sunday. So sometime around Saturday or Sunday? Yes. And what did you hear Chad say about Tammy? Um, that she was a good wife, I believe. Um, I'm, I'm not recalling right now what, she, what he said. Do you recall him ever mentioning that he was going to divorce her? Never heard that. Ever hear him talk about getting separated? No. Did you observe Chad and Lori interact while you were there? Yes. Did you observe them interact several times through your stay? Yes. What were your observations of their interactions? Um, they seemed to be a couple that was close and loved each other. There was affection, hugging. I saw her her kid on the cheek. Um, they were singing together, maybe a little dancing. So affectionate with each other. Yes. Do you recall ever seeing them act affectionate outside of the apartment? Yes. What do you recall about that? Uh, we were walking around the campus and they were holding hands. Uh, campus is pretty broad, Miss Blake. When you refer to campus, do you know which campus that was? The BYU Idaho. All right. The BYU Idaho campus is what you said? Yes. I'm going to pause so you can take a drink. Thank you. And do you recall approximately when you went and walked the track during your time in Idaho? Um, it was really in the beginning, so it was either Wednesday night or Thursday night. And what did you observe between them at the BYU-Idaho track? Very affectionate and loving towards each other. Did you ever ask them or did they ever say anything to you about that? I asked them if they were concerned, if uh, they were worried if Tammy might see them together, and she let me know that Tammy, you know, wasn't aware of his personal life like that, where he went. But again, no indication of divorce or separation. Correct. Did Lori ever talk to you about September 22nd having any kind of special meaning to her? Yes. What did she tell you about that? She told me that it was an anniversary for her of when she saw Moroni in the temple. And do you recall the last time you saw JJ? It was the Sunday night, the 22nd. What was happening the last time you saw him, if you remember? I was in the house, Lori's house, and I was doing a recording with um, Lori and David and Alex walked in the door holding JJ on his shoulder and was taking him to bed. He had fallen asleep. And did you see where Alex put JJ to bed? No. Do you know which room JJ normally slept in? He often slept with his mom in the corner of her room. There was a little spot that she would put a bed in there for him. But he also had his own bedroom too. Did he sleep in his bedroom that night? No. And how do you know that? Because I was in I was in that bedroom, then JJ's bedroom, so he wasn't in there. And you talked earlier you were gonna stay in Tylee's room. Right. Can you tell us why you ended up in JJ's room? So I was, you know, slept often in in Tylee's room and then when David got there, him and I we were in the same room that night together talking and reading scriptures and I go into bed. So did David have his things in JJ's room? Yeah. So was it your understanding JJ was put to bed in Lori's room that night? Yes. What, if anything, happened that night out of the ordinary? Um, David uh, woke up with a 
just a panic. He had a really bad dream, like a nightmare, and he was very disturbed by it. And I asked him, you know, what was going on, what he would, you know, experienced. And so I was concerned and I thought I could um, call out and see if I can get some help from Laurie Chad to see if they could give him a, a priesthood blessing of comfort. Did Rich, you- I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear the first word. Should give him a what blessing? A priesthood blessing. Did you, in fact, try to contact Chad? Yes. How did you try to contact him? Um, text or phone call. Did he respond? No. And would this have been in the early morning hours? Sometime in the early morning. Did you attempt to make contact with Lori? Yes. And how did you try to do that? The same. Text and phone call. And then I went to her room to see if she was there, and it was locked. Did she respond to the text or phone call? No. And then her bedroom door was locked. Correct. You have no way to know who was on the other side? No. Did anyone ever open the door for you? No. And you said that was on the 22nd. Correct. Did you see JJ the next day? No. Did you ever see JJ again? No. After Charles was killed, did Lori ever share with you how she was going to survive financially? She talked about um, money she received from um, JJ, from his Social Security. She talked about, and uh, let's see, she talked about, I think, like, was it Social Security for? Um, Charles and and then we talked about insurance a little bit, but I'm not sure if that's what you're thinking of. So, do you know if she ever received any life insurance for Charles? I don't think so. So, to the best of your knowledge, she was living off the Social Security money. Yeah, to my knowledge. Do you know if Lori ever got a job when she came to Idaho? No, not that I'm aware of. Did she ever tell you that she had a job lined up and that's why she was moving to Idaho? No. At some point, did Lori talk to you about some struggles with JJ? Yes. What did she share with you about that? She said that he was um, acting out more um, as far as the weekend that I was there in September, that he was acting like he was possessed. He was, um, one minute he would be upset, one minute she would say he was talking very intelligent, Um, just a variety of different um, behaviors. Um, She seemed troubled by it, that he had been taken over by evil spirit, that he was upsetting. I don't know. She just seemed kind of upset by it. Did she ever indicate any kind of a plan of how she was going to handle that? Yes. What did she tell you? She said that she wanted uh, Kay to have JJ. Did she ever talk to you about a plan to get JJ to Kay? Yes. What did she tell you? She said that uh, she wanted to meet together with her in the airport and and talk to her about her, you know, like she had cancer or something like that, and that if she would um, take him or a relative that was close by to Kay's family, that would take him. And did Lori talk to you about coming up with what to tell Kay to get her to take JJ? Yeah, we talked about that. And. Did you help her come up with an idea to tell Kay that Lori was sick and so she needed Kay to take JJ? She was throwing different ideas out with me and so we talked about that kind of scenario. Yeah. Was it your understanding that Lori actually did in fact contact Kay? Is that what she told you? Yes, she did. Did she tell you that in fact she had given JJ to Kay? She did. And we go back to the last time you saw JJ is the night of September 22nd. That next morning, did Lori say anything in in relation to where JJ was that day? 
Um, I believe she said that um, David remembers this more than I do, but uh, that she was with Al- he was with Alex this mor- that morning. And is it sometime after that that Lori leads you to believe that she sent JJ to be with Kay? Yes. Did Lori talk to you about how she transferred JJ to Kay, the custody? Yes. And how was that? She said they met up in the Salt Lake City Airport and she took JJ. And we'd talked, um, actually, let me back up. Sometime later in, so you're there in September. Mm -hmm. Did you continue to be in contact with Lori after that trip? Yes. Did she, did you ever hear JJ in the background on any phone calls? No. Do you recall getting a call from Chad sometime in November of 2019? Yes. Do you recall where you were when you got that call? Yes, I was in Utah. Do you recall approximately when it was? It was, I felt like it was like uh, two or three days before Thanksgiving. Do you recall what Chad told you or why he was calling? Yes. And why was that? Um, He told me that the Rexburg police were going to call me and ask about JJ. What, if anything, did he tell you to do in regards to that? He asked me not to pick up the phone and talk to them. Did he tell you why he thought the police were going to call you? Because um, he said that Lori had told the police that I had JJ. How did Chad sound in that phone call? Nervous. Did you have JJ? No. Did you ask Chad where JJ was at that time? I said, he's not with Kay, and he's no. And prior to that, where had Lori told you JJ was? He was with Kay. Did Chad tell you anything else that you recall? Um, He said that uh, Lori would shortly be calling me after that, um, but she was talking to the police. I can't remember right now everything else. It was very brief. Do you know, do you recall if Chad indicated where he was when he placed that phone call? I don't recall. Did you learn at some point where Chad and Lori were? What state? Oh, uh, Idaho. Did Lori, in fact, end up reaching out to you? She did. Do you recall what she told you? Um, she, when she answered the phone or when I answered the phone, she was very positive and upbeat as if everything was okay. And she said that, um, she was protecting Tylene and JJ because, um, Kay was in her and others were trying to kidnap him. So that's why. And she told me, um, to go to a, a frozen movie and take a picture to act like, there's other kids like I had him. Um, and did law enforcement, in fact, try to reach out to you? They did. Did you answer initially? Initially, no. Do you recall at any point if Lori, Alex, or Chad had told you anything regarding law enforcement? Um, at some point, yes. Uh, mm. I can't remember the beginning, but I remember having a phone conversation with Alex, or maybe it was in person, um, that the that the the police had come to his house and Melanie's house um to ramsack his house. And they came questioning and asking about where JJ was. At any point, were you told whether or not law enforcement were dark? Yes. And what were you told in regards to that? Um, I remember Alex saying they were considered dark translated beings. And again, who was it that 
was able to determine if someone was dark from your understanding? From my understanding was Chad. So initially you don't answer the call from law enforcement. Why was that? Because I was absolutely did not know and understand what to do about it. At some point, did you end up talking to law enforcement? I did. What did you initially tell them in relation to JJ? So when I called Gilbert police, I initially told them I had JJ, but then I didn't have him. He was back with Lori. So initially you complied a little bit with what Lori had asked. Correct. Not fair. Yes. At some point, did you make contact with law enforcement again? Yes. And did you end up making contact with them through an attorney? Initially. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? So um, right after I discovered um, that I needed to go talk to the police, uh, the day I was going to go, I had a phone call from a friend who I hadn't talked to in about a year or two. He was an attorney, happened to be an attorney, and um, he felt impressed. He told me to call me out of the blue. I mean, no knowledge of this case had been revealed to the public, so he wouldn't have known to call me. And um, he, and then I felt to share a little bit about what was going on. And so he said, you know, I should probably do a, you know, a, um, a child, what do they call that? I'm sorry, I'm forgetting the name. Are you thinking welfare check? Welfare check. And I really wasn't sure what that meant because I've never been involved in that kind of dynamic before. So, um, yeah. And did that friend of yours, the attorney, reach out to law enforcement and request a welfare check? Yes. At this point in time, did you have concerns about JJ's well-being? Yes. Did you have concerns about Tylee's well-being? Yes. Did you end up sitting down with law enforcement later and telling them more about in regards to whether or not JJ was ever with you? Yes, I told them everything. And did you do that without an attorney? Um, yes. And did you, in fact, tell them JJ had never been with you? Correct. Did you learn who had made uh, or who had initially reported the children missing? I'm sorry. Can, can you... Did you ever learn who had reported the children or JJ missing? Um, are you referring to like maybe Kay contacting the police? Is yes. that what you mean? Yes. Okay. Did you learn that? Um, I I think so. I yeah, I think so. So originally, Lori told you she'd given JJ to Kay. Is that correct? That's correct. And then later, she told you Kay was going to try to kidnap JJ. Right. Did Lori disclose the location of JJ to you at that time? No. At some point, did you end up, or let me back up, after those calls from Chad and Lori around Thanksgiving, did you have further contact with Chad and or Lori? Um, so after, yes, um, after I went to think, so I went to Arizona uh, for Thanksgiving and Dave and I pulled over and called them because we were really concerned and wanted to have a prayer. We were worried about everybody. So that was a few days later. And did Chad or Lori answer? We called both of them. So, And they were together? Yes. In that conversation, did Chad or Lori tell you where JJ was? No, they didn't tell me where he was. At some point, did you end up talking to Alex? Yes. And did you talk to Alex about your concerns with JJ? I did. Do you recall what Alex told you? Yes. Um, I asked him. Judge, could I have some foundation as to when this conversation supposedly took place? Objection based on foundation, Ms. Blake. I'll ask some additional questions. Thank you. Do you recall approximately when you spoke with Alex about your concerns? I think it was the day or two after Thanksgiving. Do you recall where you spoke to him? 
Yes, it was uh, in uh, Arizona, and we were um, behind uh, the house that he just moved into, which was Sue Lemon's house. And we were, there was a field there. We were walking and talking, and that's where I asked him. Do you recall if anyone else was present for that conversation? Uh, Melanie was there, and then shortly after that, Sulema showed up. So, and when you say Melanie, was that Lori's niece? Yes. And what did Alex tell you in relation to where JJ was or to your concerns for JJ? Um, I just said, do I want to know where JJ was? And he said, no. And then he proceeded to tell me about um, the police come into their apartment. And I didn't understand why they would do that. So we talked a little bit about that. But when you ask if you wanted to know where JJ was, his response was, you didn't want to know. That's right. At some point, did you end up making a phone call?